Exactly one month ago, we had taken a look at a new autonomous AI agent framework that was practically capable of doing anything with the help of AI. From generating full stack apps to coding, it's a framework called Agent Zero. And it is a great new advancement for the AI space. Now, just this week, the developer of Agent Zero came out with its first big new update. And with this new release, there is an upgrade to the new sleek introduction of a web UI, which will enable you to easily develop whatever you would like with this new UI. Now, the agents will now respond in a better structured manner as well. It's going to output different thoughts, tools, and plugins used, the code, as well as the runtime. And from there, it will construct and deploy agents as needed. And this is to help create whatever you would like from a single prompt. For the people who do not know, Agent Zero is a personal dynamic AI agent framework that will organically grow and adapt as you use it. It's fully transparent, customizable, and interactive. And it's going to allow users to easily understand and modify its processes. It acts as an AI-powered assistant. And with Agent Zero, it can basically utilize your computer to complete tasks efficiently and intelligently. Now, I highly recommend that you take a look at this previous video on it because it showcases all the ins and outs. It talks about the key concepts as well as goes through installing it, which I'm going to be showcasing today to showcase how you can install the new web UI. But I'll leave a link to this in the description below. But now let's take a look at the creator's view himself, who is going to basically explain and describe this new update. Hello, guys. A new version of Agent Zero is being released. So let's jump into the updates. The biggest one being the new Web UI prototype. So let's start there. I tell my agent to create an Ethereum address starting with three zeros and give me the key and the address. First, I will see this blue message box with the agent generating these instructions. I can see he wants to use the code execution tool with a code and I can see his thoughts and I can still see the original JSON the LLM has generated. Now, before we get started, I definitely recommend that you take a look at the Patreon page so that you can access the new subscriptions that will be releasing this week. And he sends me a message containing the Ethereum address with three zeros and the private key as well. And because the agent is still running in the background, just like before, I can see this output as well. If you want to change your model for chat, embedding, or configure any of the runtime parameters, you can now do it in the initialize.py file. The next update is in the prompts directory. Now it has subfolders. All the default prompts have been moved to a default subfolder. And here in the initialize.py file, you can select a prompt subfolder you want to use for your agent. So if you want to experiment with various prompts, you can create as many custom subfolders as you want. A new memory feature is the knowledge folder in the project directory, where you can put your documents you want to import into the agent memory automatically. So if you want to have a persistent knowledge base, you can put your files into the knowledge folder and they will be automatically imported into the agent when the vector DB starts. Right now, text, PDF, CSV, HTML, JSON and markdown files are supported, but I suppose this list will grow in the future. When I try it with my agent, the first time the memory is initialized, I get a message that one knowledge file has been found in the knowledge folder and that 89 documents have been split from that file. And I ask my agent a question for something that is in the chemistry book I imported and he was able to get the answer for me. And both the memory and the knowledge support subdirectories. So if you want to experiment and you want to specify various subdirectories to keep things organized, you can do it in the initialize.py file. For both the prompts, uh, memory and knowledge, I would like the agent to have the option to choose the folder himself in the future. So for example, when one agent creates a subordinate agent, he would be able to give him different folders to, for example, fit his role or whatever the developer sees fit. For the next versions, I would like to improve on the UI, add more configurations to the panel on the left, and also add more options and features to the chat window itself. 
in gist there is a new ui there is a new memory system built in where you can upload your documents you also have subfolders where you can configure custom prompts as well as utilize open source models and that's basically a gist of this new update now before we get started with installing this you need to understand a couple of things this could be really dangerous if you do not have agent zero contained in an environment the reason why is because Agent Zero has the ability to basically break the operating system. It can deactivate virtual environments, uninstall packages, and change configurations, which is why we're going to be installing Docker as well as Conda. There's two different options, but now let's get started and talk about the prerequisites that you will need to install Agent Zero locally. First things first, for this video, I'm going to be utilizing Conda, but you can also use Docker. This is to help contain agent zero in a safe environment you're going to need to make sure that you have python as your programming language get to help clone the repository onto our desktop you'll need vs code as our code editor as well as helping us configure apis you need to also have an open ai api key and lastly a perplexity api key so if you're on windows follow along but if you're on linux or mac os just configure certain commands for your operating system so what you want to do is open up command prompt once you have done so, you want to basically start off by typing in conda create dash n. And this is if you have installed conda onto your computer and you're going to be following along with this step. This is to basically create that virtual environment for us. So conda create dash n and then the name of your environment. So I can just name it agent zero and then click enter. Uh, looks like I put two zeros or two O's. So now what i'm going to be doing is then clicking on proceeding so click yes it's going to create this and now what you can do is just simply type in conda or activate activate agent zero and then click enter now that you have your virtual environment created what you can do is head over to the github repository once you are here you can scroll all the way up click on this green button and copy the link now just uh reference all the links that i use in today's video in the description below now go back into your command prompt type in git clone and then paste the link in and click enter this will start cloning this repository and once it has done so you can then open up vs code and the reason why is because we're going to be now inputting our api keys into the required packages so now just simply click open up a new folder or do a new window first you want to then click on a uh, new or sorry open folder to find the folder that you just recently cloned so now that you have this opened up you're going to now need to add the configurations so what you want to do is head over to the example.n file and what you want to do is right click on it first click on rename and just get rid of the example and then you can just then input the api keys that you want to work with at the moment, it utilizes Perplexity's API as a base. So if you want to utilize other ones, you can just simply set it with the commands they have set all the way at the bottom. They showcase how you can enable the API of your choice. And once you have done so, just simply click on file and then just click save. Once that is done, you can actually close VS Code or you can minimize it so that you can configure certain things such as uploading your knowledge base. This is where you're going to be able to upload different files in knowledge as well as in prompts you can configure these different prompts which was shown in the video but now that we have everything figured out with just click save and then you can close this now what you want to do is install the dependencies to do so you want to go back into the agent zero folder by typing in cd agent dash zero and then clicking enter and then pasting in the pip install dash r requirements command this is going to start installing everything that is necessary and then you can just simply run the command if you want to utilize the the cli you can just simply run the cli command but if you want to use the ui just copy this command and then paste it in to this uh command prompt once it finishes installing so now that it has finished installing what you can do is just simply paste in that ui command and it should open up within a couple of seconds so there you go you have the local host opened up so just simply copy this and you can then paste it into your web browser and you're going to be able to access the agent zero ui and you can see there's a couple of things that you can do quick actions which are to reset the chat new chat 
you have auto scroll, you have show dots, you can also show the JSON. And that's about it for today's video. I definitely recommend that you watch my previous video because it goes further in detail for the types of generations that I basically was able to output with Agent Zero. So if you're interested in that, definitely take a look at that. But that's about it for this new update on Agent Zero. You have a beautiful new UI, you have a new memory system, and you can also work with custom prompts. Definitely want to give huge props to the creator of Agent Zero. He has done a great job in developing this new framework by himself. And it's just great to see that there are more people working on releasing better things for the AI space as well as for the AI community. So definitely give him a follow on YouTube, Twitter, as well as join his Discord. And if you want to contribute, you can help him do so on the Discord. I'll leave all the links that I use in today's video in the description below. Make sure you follow me on the Patreon, a great way for you to stay up to date with the latest AI subscriptions. You can also follow me on Twitter, a great way for you to stay up to date with the AI, latest AI news. And lastly, make sure you guys subscribe, turn on the notification bell, like this video and check out our previous videos so you can stay up to date with the latest AI news. But with that thought, guys, have an amazing day. Spread positivity and I'll see you guys fairly shortly. Peace out, fellas.